Welcome to our lecture online. Enthalpy and entropy are often confused with one another. And the reason for that is mostly because they sound so much alike, enthalpy, entropy, but they're very different quantities, very different things. So let's take a look at them side by side to make it clear how they are different. First of all, enthalpy is a measure of energy that is being exchanged. Entropy is a measure of the disorder of a system. So as something becomes more disorderly, entropy goes up and that's a natural state of being. It th things tend to become more disordered and that entropy goes up accordingly. So it's a measure of disorder as opposed to enthalpy, which is a measure of the exchange of energy. The equation says that enthalpy is equal to the internal energy of a system plus the product of P times V, which essentially represents the energy needed to expand the system against the environment. Notice that the change of entropy is simply equal to the heat exchanged between two systems divided by the temperature at which this happens. And it turns out that the sum of those changes always end up being positive. The units are joules per mole, where the units here are joules per Kelvin. H, enthalpy, represents the energy supplied as heat at a constant pressure. So we assume that the system, the environment we're in, is under constant pressure because the environment is typically the atmosphere. So we usually do these experiments or do these chemical reactions at STP conditions for uh, uniformity. And so therefore we can say that it's happening at constant pressure, atmospheric pressure, and so therefore enthalpy is energy supplied as heat, or taken away, at constant pressure. Where entropy is a spont oh, that should be an S, is, is a spontaneous process. Entropy is always increasing whenever heat is exchanged, and therefore delta S, what we call the change in entropy, is therefore always positive. Notice that in a cyclic process, we get from where we start, we end up in the same place, when we mean same place, not geographically, but when everything is the same as when we started, the system is exactly the same as before, no matter what happened in between, we see that enthalpy will be zero in that cyclic process. And the same goes for the change in entropy, it's always zero in a cyclic process. Whenever you get back to the same place we started, not geographically, but the way the systems are set up, there's no change in entropy, no change in enthalpy. Notice that enthalpy will be positive for an endothermic process, which means that when you absorb energy from, from the environment into the system, enthalpy goes up. When you expel energy for an exothermic process, that means ent enthalpy is negative. Notice that the change in entropy, I always have to be careful what I say, enthalpy, entropy, enthalpy, entropy, they sound so alike, right? So the increase, the, no, the change in entropy will be positive for spontaneous processes. So whenever something happens spontaneously, whenever heat is exchanged from where it's hot to where it's cold, entropy will go up. You never see heat flowing from where it's cold to where it's hot unless it's pushed there, like by a heat pump or some other mechanical device. So spontaneously, entropy will always be positive because heat will always flow from where it's hot to where it's cold. When it's the other way around, well, that means entropy will be negative, but that's a non-spontaneous process that requires an input of energy and work to do that. According to the first law of thermodynamics, energy of the universe is constant. In other words, energy cannot be created nor, nor be destroyed. It can only change from one form to another. First law of thermodynamics. Second law of thermodynamics tells us that entropy of the universe always increases because in the universe there's always heat flowing from where it's hot to where it's cold. And whenever heat flows from where, where it's hot to where it's cold, entropy will increase. And finally, systems favor a minimum H. Now remember, that when H is positive, we have an endo endothermic process. That means heat is absorbed. And so that is the least favorable situation. Heat being given off is the most likely way in which something will happen. But in other words, 
if a process can only happen when it absorbs heat and you must get it from somewhere, that's a less likely scenario to happen. But when a system readily gives off energy, go ahead, have the reaction, just give off the energy, that's a more likely scenario. So therefore we can say that systems favor a minimum H, H to be as little as possible, preferably a negative number. In the case of entropy, we see that systems favor maximum S. Whenever there's the greatest increase in entropy, that's the most likely scenario that's going to happen. Heat will travel from where it's very hot to where it's very cold readily, but in those circumstances, the change in entropy will be much greater, and that would be the natural affair of things. In other words, that's the most likely scenario to happen. And so again, setting these side by side, I hope this really makes for you, it, that makes it clear for you what the differences are between enthalpy and entropy. They're miles apart in what they represent, and that is how we can tell.